Hello everybody, welcome to the Carmichael Workshop. I'm Steve and in my previous video I used the Inventables X-Carve machine to make this electric guitar. So if you'd like to see that video, I'll put a link to it in the corner up here and also in the video description down below, so check that out. Today I'd like to do a follow-up video and answer a lot of the questions I received about the guitar. Also talk a little bit more about the process and I'm going to play it some more for you, so stick around. This first question comes from my buddy Tom, whom I've known since 7th grade. He says, top notch, whammy bar on the next one? <laughs> sure, we used to play in a band together, so I guess I use my whammy bar too much. <laughs> Jeff asked, can you make me something with your CNC machine? How can I contact you for a project? Well, Jeff, you're going to have to compete with my videos and also my family and friends who ask me for stuff. Uh, but send me an email at thecarmichaelworkshop at gmail.com and I'm sure we can work something out for a price. Derek says, this is the first X-Carve I've seen with a VAC attachment. Is this your design or an optional accessory? Well, Derek, there's a few different uh, VAC attachments I've seen out on YouTube. Uh, if you do a search, you might find a few more. But this one is definitely my contraption. <laughs> it's an old CPAP hose that's connected with a cable clamp from the big box store and it just connects to my one gallon shop vac and that's all it is matt says awesome <laughs> thanks matt why no pit guard and from a fellow drummer looks good to me uh well i have a soft spot for showing wood grain and since i dyed the wood blue i kind of wanted to show it off so that's why i didn't put a really large pit guard to cover it up I just opted for the pickup plate and also the plate for the knobs. Words and Wood says, Slick Steve, great job. Those are some seriously long cutting sessions on the x car. Yes, they were. <laughs> is the truss rod end still accessible once the neck is mounted to the body? Uh, for that, I wanted to kind of hide the hole for the truss rod. So the answer is no, you can't get an Allen key in there. To adjust the truss rod you just have to take the neck off adjust it and put it back on and there are a lot of guitars like that so uh, it's not out of the ordinary but um, I wanted to kind of hide that truss rod hole so that's why I did that Wayne says love it what wood are you going to use for the next one and the next and the next <laughs> whoa slow down <laughs> baby steps uh, I am thinking about doing a second guitar Probably when the weather gets cooler and it's not so hot out here in the shop. Uh, I was thinking about using mahogany for the next one, so we'll see. Backyard Woodworks Crafts and More has a great question. Now, did you sit and watch the entire time, or did you feel confident enough to walk away? And if so, what was the longest you walked away for? Well, these were some long jobs, and the body took six hours, the neck five hours, and the fretboard about four hours. And I was able to do other things in the shop, like clean up and stuff. Uh, but I did check on it every 30 minutes or so. And the X-Carve made it through to the end of every job with no problem. I was more concerned about my little one-gallon shop vac. Uh, because I don't think the shop vacs are intended to run for like six-hour periods straight. Uh, maybe a dust collector might be a better solution. If any of you have any suggestions, uh, please leave me a comment below. Uh, so we can all, you know, find out what's the best vacuum solution for these uh, CNC machines. Bentley asked, have you been on TDPRI, Steve? And yes, Bentley, I was on that site almost daily looking up information about building guitars. There's lots of great information there from guys like you and me who are trying to learn how to build guitars. Uh, also, some other sites I used uh, that were great resources were Fletcher Handcrafted Guitars, and also Sully Guitars. And I'm going to include links to those guys' channels below. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to build guitars, you will want to subscribe to those channels. Uh, they provide a lot of excellent information for uh, people who are just starting out. Alex says, I thought you made a 2x4 guitar. Yes, I did, Alex. It's right over there hanging on the pegboard. <laughs> Since that was for the 2x4 contest, I cut a lot of corners. I didn't use a truss rod. I used cotter pins for frets, and I also made it acoustic style. But for this one, I wanted to go full-blown electric guitar and use all the right parts. Here's a question from Danny. Did you by any chance use quarter sawn for the neck? If not, how's it holding up? 
Well, I did not use quarter sawn. I just used some maple that I had on hand. Uh, it's not twisted or warped or anything, so I think it's holding up fine. I know that quarter sawn wood is the preferred wood for a guitar neck, so I'll probably look for that when I do my second guitar. Brian asked, how long did you wait in between jobs on the X-Carve? Well, Brian, I have a full-time job, so I can only do this on nights and weekends. And since the jobs were pretty long, I think I did one on a Saturday, one on a Sunday, and then one on a Monday night. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I might have skipped a day. Um, but I did separate out the jobs. Uh, if you did them back to back in one day, that would be, I don't know, like 15 or 16 hours. That would make for a long day. So uh, for me, it was easier to spread them out. Here's a question from my buddy Mac. I met Mac last year at Woodworking in America in Winston-Salem. Hi, Mac. <laughs> he asked, do the frets just get hammered in or is there an adhesive to hold them in? Well, some people do glue them in with CA glue uh, so they don't come out. Uh, but the frets uh, are like T-shaped and uh, the vertical part of the T uh, is the tang and it has barbs on the sides. So when you hammer the frets in, the barbs catch the wood and hold the frets in. So that's how that works. Brian says, that turned out really well. Congrats. Thanks, Brian. Uh, were those durations accurate? Uh, yeah, Brian's referring to the information I displayed on the screen in the guitar video. Uh, when the X-Carve was running, I showed how long it took to run out each part and also the speeds and the depth of cut I was making uh, for each part. And those uh, durations were pretty accurate. I just kind of rounded off the, the times like from 11 to 5 and said that was 6 hours. So um, yeah, they were uh, pretty close. Steve says, that's the best thing I've seen made by the X-Carve so far. Wow, thanks. Uh, he has a question though. As I use this uh, sanding block to radius the neck, uh, afterward, how did I have enough slot depth at the edge of the neck uh, for the frets to be hammered in? And uh, for that, I just cut the fret slots a little deeper, knowing ahead of time that I'm going to be sanding some of the edges away. So uh, they fit pretty good. Here's a comment from Pipman10234. He says, there should be a woodworker band with you, the drunken woodworker, and the wood whisperer, and any other woodworker who plays musical instrument. Uh, that sounds cool to me. Uh, maybe we could start up a band at Woodworking in America uh, in Kansas City this September if uh, everyone's going to be there. Uh, that'd be a blast. <laughs> DJ Swain asks, didn't drunken woodworker do this too? Yes, uh, David Picciuto over at the Drunken Wood channel, he also made an electric guitar using his x -Carve. So I'll put a link in the video description below so you can check out his video. It was pretty cool to see how he did things a little differently. So uh, go check out David's video. Heavy Boxes said that CNC cuts really deep. Yeah, the body itself was an inch and three quarters thick. Did you have to purchase a special bit or did you already have it? Well, I contacted Inventables and asked them what kind of bit they recommend, and they recommended the quarter inch two flute upcut spiral bit. And that's what I used, and I had to order the uh, quarter inch collet adapter for the stock spindle uh, in order to use that quarter inch bit. And they sent that to me so that I could do the video. So thanks to Inventables. Over on my Facebook page, someone asked if they could get the templates for this guitar. Well, if you go to inventables.com and click on the projects tab, I created a project for the guitar that's got some basic instructions. And within the instructions, you can actually click a link to copy my easel files that I use to cut out all the parts for the guitar. Uh, you can open them up and edit them as you wish and even use them to make your own guitar. I want to show you a couple of tools that came in real handy on this guitar project. Uh, the first is the Stanley Sureform file. Uh, they still sell these at the big box store, but this one belonged to my father, and it did a great job of aggressively taking off material when I was shaping the back of the neck. Uh, so this is my new best friend. And also, I'd like to thank Jason Searing of Searing Custom Guitars. He sent me this fret rocker uh, with my logo on it, and he sent it with his sticker, 
and I didn't really know what this was. I had to ask him to explain it. But basically, uh, I use that to uh, help level the frets. So what you do is use the different lengths on this polygon here uh, to test out your frets. Uh, basically, you lay it across three frets, and then you try to rock it back and forth. Uh, and if it rocks, then you know the middle one is too high and you need to work on it. Uh, so that came in real handy as far as getting rid of all the fret buzz I had in probably about a dozen locations throughout the neck. Well, thanks to all of you who watched my electric guitar video and asked questions and left me comments. I really appreciate it. And thanks for hanging out with me today on this follow-up video. If you have any more comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll get right back to you. Now I'm going to plug in the guitar and crank up the amp and play some more music for you. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.